Hey, thanks for listening to the Aftermarket's premier podcast that connects you and your peers into an audio networking group. It's Carm Capriato, your Aftermarket podcast guy, and we offer nothing, nothing but the best stories, relevant content, and must-hear panel discussions to help the industry rise to new levels. Hey, today we're going to talk about Secure Vehicle Interface, or SVI. Now, we can't get enough information on the plethora of technology that's happening at such an enormous rate. With me is Joe Register, the Vice President of Emerging Technologies at the Auto Care Association. Now, I love talking to Joe, and we've done episodes in the past with big uptakes on technology. Joe also brought slides with him, so we have the video of our interview on the YouTube channel and on the show page on the website, and I'll give you that URL in a minute. Joe Register has over 40 years of experience delivering progressive system solutions to companies in every channel of the automotive aftermarket. Now, this is our third interview, and we're also doing an ADAS update, so look for that soon. I love listening to Joe. He's so well-connected through his work in helping to create tech and interface standards with ISO, the International Organization for Standards, and SAE, the Society of Automotive Engineers. Hey, we've got two great partners that bring you today's episode. And without them, well, you know, it would be dead air. Who are they? Well, Virtual Apex and Shopware. Hey, you know, the Virtual Apex Experience is offering free technical, free did I say, technical and management training for shop owners, technicians, and service advisors. This training, which is valued at hundreds of dollars, remember, is free. And it'll be held November 3rd through the 5th, 2020. Don't miss it. Make the smart move. Go register right now because registration is required and can be completed on the web at aapexshow.com slash register. Are you looking to transform your shop with the only management system that will give you more profit and more time? Find out how shops using shopware are driving up their profit with more efficient staff and a whole lot happier customers. Go online and visit GetShopware.com for a free demo. Tell them Carm sent you. Hey, the key talking points for this episode with Joe Register are at RemarkableResults.biz slash E582, where you can also see the video of this recording and the slides that Joe references. Based on the same set of standards, so no one has to have some kind of protracted proprietary discussions about, well, here's the way mine works and here's the way mine works. And then back and forth with trying to figure out how to connect. Hey, more with Joe Register in just a minute. Now, no doubt this episode will broaden your horizon as it relates to the tech we deal with today and well into the future. This information I know will will affect all of us. And the more we know, the better. Hey, so many of you listen while you're multitasking, and I know that through surveys. Now, that's what makes podcasting so cool is you can listen wherever you want and whenever you want. Now, that's the power of an on-demand podcast, and you can always complete the episode where you left off any time that your schedule permits. Hey, I hope you're watching the live shop tour each and every week on the show, Aftermarket Weekly. Now, if not... You can see every episode on the aftermarketweekly.com website. This is one of the most unique and fun shows for all aftermarket professionals, and I love to host it. It's a breath of fresh air in its format and the things that you can learn or affirm. Hey, thanks for hanging out to grab your dose of aftermarket wisdom. Hey, a warm welcome to my friend Joe Register from Auto Care. Hello, Joe. Hello, Carm. Good to see you again. Apex is coming up, and Joe and I usually sit in the studio, and we talk about emerging tech, and it's not, it's going to be virtual this year. So I picked up the phone and said, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, boy, uh, we had one hell of a discussion, and um, we're going to bring it to our audience right now. You, you are working so hard to what I believe is to work with the standards in the industry, but also for a guy like me to demystify some of this crazy stuff that's going on music to my ears i hope i can do that for everyone listening carm that's my objective well i know you brought some slides so anyone who's listening to this through audio will probably enjoy going uh we'll release this as a video and you can see some of joe's slides now you told me hey man um the fleet's getting older OE has so many other things to worry about because of COVID, but yet we've got to march on with all of the 
initiatives that are going on with Vita network, Vita person, Vita device, Vita I infrastructure. And, you know, you are Mr. Acronym. So every once in a while, we may have to stop and say, what does that mean? Yeah, just smack me one, Carm. That's what everybody else does. I try not to fall in the trap, but I'm I'm sorry. There, you know, there's potholes everywhere. So sometimes I do. So what I wanted to really discuss in this episode was secure vehicle interface. We talked a lot about that together last year. And I know that if there's anything you're rocking on, it's got to be this. It is indeed. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's from a standpoint of telematics and, you know, there's a you want to go to the slides that just shows you what the typical dash looks like in a vehicle nowadays. It's craziness. Carm. You, you go into uh, a vehicle. I mean, probably the most drastic uh, example is, you know, taking a Tesla vehicle, uh, which has this. I don't know what size it is now, but this enormous screen. They you know, they're called formally they're called HMI human machine interface and um, they don't really have any other knobs and anything else on it it's just you know touch and and off you go you know there's a wealth of data that's being collected from vehicles now and you've got all these sensors all over and those little round goodies that are all over sh- the the car show there's you know information being collected both inside the car as well as outside the car I mean I think a lot of people know that you know your rear view mirror is looking at you as you go down the road Road, and many people right now are looking for ways to get as accurate a picture of your attention as possible as you're rocketing down the road, because that's the other equation, right? So you put something on and it's automated, uh, whether it's you know um, uh, a cruise control device or whatever, and down the road you go and the information is uh, coming to you, but are you awake? <laughs> How are you able to take over if you're supposed to, which, you know, Everything except, you know, level five is, you know, is depending on the driver to be able to take over. So driver attention has a lot to do with where we are with uh, autonomy three, autonomy four. I mean, five is per- five is pretty much going to say we don't care if you're awake or not. Exactly. And this is why I think, you know, I mean, NHTSA took another run at, uh, at these levels a, a couple of years ago, as you know. And, and the reason they did is because it was starting to blur between twos and threes, especially. And, and you know, people were trying to suggest they were 3.5s and et cetera. But the reality is there's still a long way to go. We're not there yet. And uh, despite the YouTube videos to the contrary. I want to give you some homage here about the fact that you are working so hard with the International Organization of Standards, more commonly called ISO. So I've already broken that acronym, ISO. And Joe's going to talk a lot about ISO. You're constantly on calls. You work on an international basis for auto care, for our industry to bring I guess, sanity or or a voice to um, what the standards are going to be. Thank you for doing that. Thanks, Carm. I really appreciate it. And the number one thing I'm working on right now is, of course, a secure vehicle interface, as you mentioned. We've been working on this for some time. If you want to just go to the slide, I've got a, a couple of bullets to kind of show the most important takeaways on on SVI. And it really comes down to understanding what uh, is important to the vehicle owner and our position on vehicle data. And this kind of tees up why something like SVI is so necessary. You are aware we've got another right to repair amendment on the books right now in Massachusetts is coming up on the ballot in November. This is really, you know, all because we believe that you as an owner of your vehicle should have control over who has access to the information your vehicle creates. And you should have access yourself if if you want that information too. The really important part about this from an aftermarket point of view is to be able to select your own service facility and be able to make sure your technicians have the same data that you know, the dealership technicians have. The vehicle manufacturer is real interested in the data when they first release a vehicle when it's under warranty, but they lose interest as that vehicle starts to age. And so it ends up falling on the aftermarket to make sure that these very sophisticated machines operate the way they were intended past that warranty period. Sophisticated machines running like they anticipated. 
You know, it just, it sends a chill over me when I think about even a five-year-old vehicle, a 10-year-old vehicle, and we don't seem to want to care to bring that vehicle up to operating specs, and we take shortcuts all the time, and that's why there's so much pent-up maintenance out there and, and need for repair. Underperformed maintenance is going to become even a greater issue. Thanks for bringing that up. There's going to be a point in time where this vehicle is not, not even work the way it was intended, but to work safely. And safety is a huge issue here. One of the real problems that um, we have too, and and I'll just I'm just going to touch on one of my my personal points here, which is I, I bought a, a brand new vehicle. Uh, the brand will remain nameless, but I'm sure this experience is the same regardless. And you go in and you spend you know thirty thousand dollars for a vehicle. You know you go through this laborious process to you know, to get the actual vehicle uh, in your hands. And then the salesman tosses you the keys and says, here you go, man, have fun, right? And wait a minute, wait a minute. This this thing I know has a lot. Now, obviously, I'm going to, you know, slow him down. But many people would just take the keys and jump in the baby and off it goes. And then they would wonder what all those other controls are about and how they work. And I think, you know, I mean, yeah, man, you, you know, manufacturers, dealerships will tell you, oh, you know, they have a, a whole process that they go through. But I didn't experience that when I bought the car. I don't know if you did, Carm. Great point. Uh, I don't have a newer vehicle. My daughter does. It. It is fairly new. They covered a little bit. Okay. And unfortunately, it was more of the creature comforts, the center stack, the cool thing with texting and music and, you know, connecting to her phone. And then a few weeks later, she says, Dad, I think I'm going to turn off that lane keep thing. And she says, it's really bothering me and stuff. And I says, honey, do me a favor. Hang in there. And, you know, a few weeks later, when she started to really realize what it could do and what it was doing for her, um, she hasn't turned it off. It's gratifying to hear stories like that, Carm. So many times people do turn these these safety devices off because they don't understand how they work and they don't understand how they're supposed to incorporate that in their driving. Let's face it. I mean, uh, back when I started driving, back in, uh, you know, when they started cranks on cars, you would jump in and, and everything was mechanical, Carm, everything. Right. The steering wheel actually worked with a connection directly to a worm roller gear that was, you know, on a, a steering linkage. And, you know, that was the way it worked. But that's not the way it is anymore. And everything's by wire. As you work on this kind of global scale with the, the discussion on secure vehicle interface, uh, you're really moving forward. I mean, I, I tell us that the progression of this universality that we should all come to expect. I mean, you're making headway, right? Absolutely, Carmen. And if you want to throw up the next slide, it'll, it'll just list some of the um, some of the important points about SVI, and then I'll talk about the progress we've made too. So, I mean, my mantra, I get some ribbing about this, but I, I say it so often, safe, secure, standardized and direct access, Baba, over and over and over again. But that's what's important. You know, these vehicles are built with features in mind. And the reality is that those features were in the minds of the vehicle manufacturers and maybe some focus groups and so forth. But thinking about repairing these was is very much an afterthought. I mean, you can tell directly by some of the quality of the information that the aftermarket receives about how to fix and repair these vehicles. I'd also suggest that they consider themselves quite often the owner of the data. Now, if you think about that in the context of your smartphone, you wouldn't appreciate that kind of an approach, right? I mean, that's your messages, that's your emails, that's your information. And you would take exception, and people do all the time when they find out that manufacturers of those devices have absconded with their data and may even be selling it to other people for profit. We just want to bring the same kind of sense to the vehicle. There's ways that we can connect directly with the vehicle, get the same information franchise dealers get and in a way that is safe and secure and standardized. And that direct access is what enables the technicians to be able to, you know, correct a faulty electronic module by applying the manufacturer's patch just as a franchise dealer would be able to do. 
Hey, Carm here. And coming up, Joe says that secure vehicle interface standards are not just for cars anymore. Hey, Carm here. Now, the Virtual Apex Experience is offering free technical and management training for shop owners, technicians, and service advisors. It's all happening November 3rd through the 5th, 2020. Now, this training, which is valued at hundreds of dollars, will be led by the industry's most highly skilled and sought-after trainers, including Jim Wilson, Tony Salas, Eric Ziegler, John Thornton, Cecil Bullard, Jeremy O'Neill, and Bill Haas, just to name a few, and I've interviewed a bunch of them. Classes are for all levels, and many are accredited toward the Automotive Aftermarket Professional, AAP, and Master Automotive Aftermarket Professional, MAAP, designations. On the technical side, topics will include Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, ADAS Diagnostics and Calibration, European Diagnostics, Lab Scope Usage, and Controller Area Networks. On the management side, you'll learn about attracting talent, creating a business culture, Effective leadership, communication skills, business continuity and valuation, and social media from concept to engagement. The Virtual Apex Experience is free. Did I say F-R-E-E? But you've got to register. To get started, go to aapexshow.com slash register. Hey, today's pandemic is causing so much stress and uncertainty for everyone right now especially shop owners. Now, how do I make sure that my staff and my customers stay protected while still moving cars through the bays? Contactless service is our new normal, and having a shop management system that not only supports this, but actually helps your business thrive through it all is key. Shopware's digital workflow with remote pay will provide that solution for you. Amy Matnett from Auto Craftsman recently commented on social media, and I quote, I can't even express how grateful I am that I jumped on board with Shopware on January 1st. Would have never guessed that I would be the only one writing service at my shop as I haven't worked in the shop for the last 15 years. But she goes on and says, I'm running my shop nonstop every day with Shopware to help me not only get the job done easier and faster, but am totally wowing my customers. End quote. Hey, if you want to wow your customers too, request a demo at GetShopware.com. Are we going to need a a licensed individual to work with this data and make the kind of changes uh, down the road? I think that what's going to happen here is that if we don't, it's very likely that the manufacturers or, or other groups will start forcing the issue. So I'm a big proponent of taking matters into our own hands and and talking actively with folks like ASE about, you know, how to get the proper training and the proper kind of validation of the skills a technician has before they actually jump into repairing a car. Let me just make another little side gesture and say, are you going to do anything at Virtual Apex as far as being able to present emerging tech like you have done in the past? Yes, and uh, I'm sure that you are going through much of the same thing that we are, Carm, and trying to bring the same invigorating and exciting and, you know, uh, state-of-the-art content in a virtual world. It's not easy. It's not a hot medium, per se, right? So you don't have an opportunity to feed off of the people and see their reactions and tune what you're doing to meet the interests of the people that you're working with. But yes, we do. As a matter of fact, we're anxious for everybody to come to the virtual apex and to see the the virtual booth that we all have running that will actually provide uh, some very exciting updates about SVI and some of the demos that we've had recently, which you know, hopefully I'll get a chance to talk about in a minute, the progress that we've made on the standard. Now we're we're coming out of the development phase and we're now getting um, folks that are starting to adopt retrofit devices that are conformant with SVI. Very exciting. AAPEXshow.com slash register. And if you're not um, going to Virtual Apex, shame on you. And for anything to see Joe's presentation. I mean, just go <laughs> just go for that. Thanks, Carm. And I'm sure Remarkable Radio will have a spot on that as well. So I'll return the favor. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I have to tell you something. I was so touched and honored that we, you know, we did an ADAS Town Hall Academy last year. And Joe, Joe put a piece of that up at the big uh, emerging tech booth uh, last year. It was, 
you know, I, I walked by and I saw it and I was just so tickled and so tickled to see that. So you're doing everything you can to reach out to our industry. What a heck of a resource. I think, Carm, that what's happened with a lot of folks is they're just becoming a bit aware of, of this larger world and these larger kinds of connections and these bigger stories about, you know, where to get help and where to get information and who's doing what and keep up the great work in, in spreading the word about, you know, the aftermarket solution, the types of approaches that we take um, in order to try and bring the same capabilities to the aftermarket that the dealerships enjoy. You know, one of our big messages in all of this is that it's becoming so much that we're just part of a whole. I have a slide here. I think that, you know, the SVI standards are not just for cars. The standards that have been developed for SVI and um, the previous slide had showed a, a URL to go to to find out a lot more about those. These are standards that are just as applicable for apps on your smartphone or for the roadside stations that are all along the road, part of this ITS uh, infrastructure. What we're really talking about is not just, you know, vehicle related. The same standards are just as viable for these other devices. Folks are starting to become aware of that, and it's, it's becoming a very exciting ecosystem that we're starting to talk about now, all based on these same standards. And, uh, of course, safe, secure, standardized and direct access. As that ecosystem evolves, it's going to create a whole new opportunity for people in developing solutions around this. And uh, it's not only going to preserve competition, but it's going to encourage people to open up brand new markets within this world. Now you're getting a peek at 2022 apex and and beyond yeah I, this is a great slide if uh, boy I, I tell you you got to watch the video this is a really slick looking slide that shows people and cars and buildings and infrastructure and everything all over the world remote servers i mean you really did a great job of making this a pictorial if you will and we get a update on our smartphone joe and then all of a sudden it starts acting smarter we have to adapt, if you will, to, oh, well, that's interesting. Can I turn it on, do more with it, turn it off? It anticipated my next thought. Or, wow, uh, I was on that website and now I'm seeing ads, you know, you know the, the, the geofencing, all that stuff that's going on with our smartphone. We have to stop and realize that we're probably more connected than we even think we are today. Well, and you're going to be a lot more connected, Carm. You know how, let's say that, you know, we're going to go out and, and uh, we're in Las Vegas next year when all of this is behind us and we want to get a ID. We're going to pull up our map. You know how that works. And so you get your phone, you pull up your map and so forth. Well, one of the things that will probably happen along with that in the future is that you will be connecting to a, as a pedestrian to this intelligent transport system. So now if we get excited and we see something else we want to go to across the street and we start to walk across the street, um, we'll actually be tracked as part of the ITS environment and the vehicles will get information about us stepping off the curb before they even see us or before the sensors on the vehicle actually even know. And so that's the kind of connectedness that we're talking about in the future. Totally amazing. I love it. Did you bring us any other slides? Yes, you did. Yeah, here, let me bring this other one up. This is great. These are actually people who are working with us in Europe. And, and uh, I just want to give a shout out to all these folks. Europe, it, the European Commission is actually a bit ahead of the U.S. in, in investigating the, uh, you know, the options for connectivity. And so we've been uh, joining with a lot of other voices there to support this approach using SVI for safe, secure, standardized and direct access. And, you know, the OEs have their own kind of proprietary way that they, they want to continue to move forward. But you know, all these folks say, well, that doesn't really suit our needs. And so, as you can see here, there's some pretty big names. Folks like when Michelin are on there with to us go online, folks like Munich, who are dongle manufacturers. to this www.svi4mobility.org website. You know, Enterprise there is a, a very, no small very lengthy webinar folks like that's Bridgestone available Goodyear on that page and, as well. You know, goes Cooper into great Tire, depth, but, but uh, in Vallejo in Europe, there's a, 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 a actual Michelin demonstration. And this one is a collaborative effort 
forward right. between so Michelin forward. and Enterprise to see how Group we can Auto, use it to be able to take in functionality in we have and today, uh, Munich in a less secure the Michelin and dongle. bring SVI and standards And this is all retrofit so, stuff, but they, uh, we know, you know that they all this communication a device that, that actually is, releases is there on their run flat tire Enterprise and, and Avis are on this list to simulate um, what's some in it for kind of a hazard really having been collected off the road. those two tire deflates because those and all the tire immediately the app comes up and says warning why would they come together and endorse something and now what happens that, is you know maybe they could get it all these folks are using so the same standards think to get about information they can start so sharing a car rental this and problem I'll use enterprise across uh, all these example, various stakeholders. You know, you return so, the car. You know, they and turn, they the way that the car is set up now, uh, you know, it comes uh, in and uh, you maybe have been driving it uh, They for come a week. and bring uh, they the look vehicle for into a damage. shop to to have but it repaired. Some people get pretty and creative it's all about done, you know, returning based a car on the same set of standards. So no one has damage. to have some There's kind a story of that's been circulating around that you probably already heard about. Well, here's the way mine works. Here's the way mine works. And then back the car looks fine. Trying to figure out how to connect. And one of the things I'll tell you, I'm really it was a savvy aftermarket guy that, that rented in Munich, and, and he knew the car was able wasn't behaving to normally. And their so existing dongle did some investigation and to the convert badge, it to be SVI found out that the radar a of a few units had been was replaced, not, but the bracket was enormous bent. process, and so took. it was pointing in the wrong direction. Now, you know, being able to so to, to have a way to connect to the vehicle that isn't brand dependent, of, uh, isn't model months. dependent, you don't have to be an expert the, on every the, the vehicle to be standard. able to attach As you and start being able to connect to these vehicles, not you know, to mention of, of the fact working that, with ISO you know, all these companies and all their bringing your passion for the aftermarket to it. Any major challenges that you have seen along the way, hit a chord, that you've seen, but then they got worked out and, and finally, you know, it, you almost started to see progress. When you're sitting down at a group of folks who, you know, are not used to working together, CARM, and many of these, I mean, there, there's countless work groups between all these different organizations, whether it's ISO or SAE or IEEE, which is the, you know, it, the electronic engineers group and so forth. Everybody has a different idea. Everybody has their own perspective on how things should work. And that actually is what makes it so rich. It actually is what makes it so valuable a process. We've had some challenges in getting the, still getting the vehicle manufacturers to work with us. Um, they are, re, you know, resistant to bringing the aftermarket in um, and and having conversations with them kind of on an equal footing, which is what the standards organizations provide. Uh, it's a level playing field for everybody's input. But that said, I mean, we've had some, some great, we've made some great strides with uh, tier one suppliers and tier two suppliers and so forth. And the people who are providing the automakers with uh, the systems that they're installing in their vehicles. I mean, more and more, um, the even the design work in no small part is being done by third parties, CARM. And so what we're finding now is that, you know, we may be talking to some group that, you know, are very active and have been active in smartphones forever, but now they're working in vehicles because they're the experts on this particular kind of connectivity and so forth. So I think there was some surprises who we were talking to, who who was willing to talk and who wasn't willing to talk. And then the fact that we made the progress as quickly as we did. A lot of people told us this was going to be a decade long uh, effort. And we were actually able to accomplish uh, securing the device in a matter of um, three short years. So that was actually pretty quick. Did the phone ever ring and someone picked up the phone and said, Joe, what is it with you guys in the OEs? All the time. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's even it's even our, um, you know, some of our organizations that are out there that are wondering why we can't get along better. And, and here's the here's some irony here for you, Carm. The whole reason we started down this SVI road to begin with, an industry association representing the OEs said, you have to talk to us with a single voice if you want us to listen. We can't listen to five or six different groups attempting to represent the aftermarket. You need to come together. The second thing they said is quit telling us what you don't want and tell us what you do want. 
Now, I suspect they didn't know we would go to the extremes that we've gone to to make that abundantly clear. But but certainly they are the ones who really inspired all of this work. And so I tip my hat to the set of circumstances that, you know, created this this opportunity. You know, certainly I think everybody's benefiting. And in the long run, I believe that the vehicle manufacturers will also see the value to these designs. It's been much too long that we got together to hear an update from you. But guess what? I know you've been busy, and that's a good thing for for all of us. Uh, Joe's going to have a great virtual booth at Virtual Apex, A-A-P-E-X, show.com slash register. Um, you got to get there, uh, not only for all the great training, the free training. I mean, Apex Virtual is free. So, I mean, I, I can't even imagine someone... Uh, not wanting to be uh, uh, playing in that in that arena for November 3rd, 4th, and 5th uh, coming up here in a few weeks. And I hope to get this podcast episode out soon so that we can catch a few more people who maybe haven't registered. Thank you so much for, for being in. As I, as I said, much too long. It's It's been a year, I think, since we, we've gotten together. And I've got to promise my audience that we'll get your brain power on here more <laughs> sooner than later. But now let us get prepared to do our ADAS episode and have and just kind of tease our audience that that's coming. Thanks, Carm. I really appreciate it. And always a pleasure. So anytime, my friend. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.